Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I mean, we finished uh, the build of the Hudson Huntslet in 60 millimeter scale, um, but a number of people have now asked for uh, the scratch head parts. Um, so I've been writing some instructions of kind of how to put the model together, um, but I thought it might be worth just briefly kind of going through um, all the printed parts uh, and explaining some things on video as well, because some of it might be just a little bit easier to. To kind of grasp i don't want to the, the the instructions are more notes i don't want to have to write really complicated instructions um so i haven't got the metal parts ready yet but we don't really need those to talk about um the order of assembly and um some hints and tips about the plastic parts so what you can see spread out here is all the the printed plastic parts so if i just kind of go through them so everybody's on the same page as to what we have then obviously we have the the main chassis component uh, the two buffer beams uh, this is the floor for the footwell uh, for uh, axle boxes the two uh, coupling blocks uh, and the jig to attach them to the buffer beams um, these two parts make up the kind of uh, the control area at the back of the, the engine uh, near where the driver sits I got two little uh, vent caps uh, go on top of the uh, of the kind of cowl of the of the back of the the engine uh, back of the control sorry uh, we have this piece <coughs> which is the the piece that goes over the top um, of the of where the motor fits at the top of the engine compartment uh, the front of the loco uh, which obviously has the the maker's name at the top and ha uh, has the grill attached um, we then have the rest of the kind of control stand area piece. Um, so that kind of glues onto onto here uh, when the, when everything's attached to the model in the right order. Um, these parts, these two parts, are the the guides for the side doors to fit. So they have um, little dimples. Um, you can just see. To take the magnets uh, that hold them in place the door kind of glues onto this side with the handles going through these holes magnets going there there's one for either side of the loco um, and then just the printed uh, car battery which i just had so i've, I've included that um, <clears throat> so that's that's kind of all the parts um, as i say obviously the other the, the other piece that you'll get if you if you are, uh, are ordering one of these from me will be the the metal cowl as I say, I've not I've not uh, fabricated those yet, so um, we won't discuss those. But um, but yeah, and then obviously you'll need to pr provide the um, the chassis from the PS models kit, the the, the motor wheels, gears, etc. Um, and you'll need to make up the seat and the side panels and things and all that's in the will be in the instructions. Um, but I just thought I'd kind of go through a quick a quick thing about how to prepare the parts and the sensible kind of order of assembly. So. Um, preparing the parts, um, I've taken off any of the support material um, that I used during printed. So all of these have had the support material if there was any removed. Um, that said, um, it's worth going through and checking each of the parts and uh, preparing them before you uh, before you try and uh, print them. So what you'll find on many of the parts is that they've been printed with one side flat to the build plate. Um, and what that the, the effect that that has is the first couple of layers when it prints, um, it prints for slightly longer, uh, and that actually causes the the material to kind of um, spread out slightly as it cures. Um, so you can kind of just about see this on this print. That's a, that that piece there is meant to be thicker, but you can see there's a slight rim around this edge here, where it's ever so slightly wider than the rest of the part. Um, and that's from where it was attached to the build plate and, and has um, has widened slightly. So you need to go through, check all the parts. Um, that, I mean, it's easy to sand off. I just took a knife and gently scrape. Uh, I might go through and prepare some of these parts a bit more before I post them out. But uh, in general, it's always worth checking yourself because obviously if there is a little line still here and it's a little raised, then that might affect the fit of other, of other parts. Um, you also need to check that there aren't any surface imperfections. Um, some of them, you know, this these engine covers um, would benefit from a tiny bit of sanding. Um, it's a curved, it's a curved surface, and it's a nice curved surface, but it does mean that there's a slight stepping. 
Um, it's very faint, um, but it is worth just kind of taking a, a bit of a sand to it uh, and check that there's no kind of um, small surface imperfections that might need filling. Um, sometimes you'll find that where they're stuck to the base plate, um, you might find ever so tight, tiny little bubbles. Um, they would, you, you might be able to just gently sand the surface and they'll disappear because they're only in the very bottom layer. Um, other times you might need to, to fill them, but there shouldn't be too many of those. I've tried to try to avoid that wherever possible. Um, so that's kind of preparing the, the prints. I've got some hints and tips in the instructions for how to prepare some of the other, the other parts as well. Um, things like the cutting the mesh uh, partly by painting it first so that um, it helps hold the, the mesh together as you cut it. Um, so yeah, so assembly. Um, first thing you need to do, and this was kind of weird to describe in the instructions, but you need to remove um, this kind of sacrificial piece here. So there's a sacrificial bar across the edge of the footwell and the top of the footwell, the kind of infill here. So you need to kind of remove all of that area there. Um, so you end up with a cutout here on the top surface. Um, I use a, a very fine uh, jeweler's piercing saw to kind of get most of it out and then file it, uh, file it flat. Uh, and what you should end up with essentially is a hole that's basically the same shape as this. Um, kind of in the top here, so that that would be kind of where you're cutting out. Um, so that's the first thing to to kind of do to prepare the prepare the chassis. It's about the only bit of support material I've left in, just because um, I don't want to risk this bit being kind of bashed about in the post. Um, it's much easier if I leave this sacrificial piece in here, and as you can see in the light here, you can see this bit's the bit to kind of be removed. Um, so once you've once you've done that, um, then obviously the buffer beams are the next thing. They glow on. There's two supporting pins, and it's obvious that one's for the front, one's for the back because the the pins are in different place. The front has the pins at the side, um, fits in nicely, uh, and this one has the pins um, slightly one at the end, one offset to go against the footwell. So in like that. Uh, and what you're aiming for is obviously to be to be level side to side uh, and in theory the top surface here uh, the top of the buffer beam should be level with the, the, the top of the the chassis so if you need to possibly file the pins slightly um, if that's not quite the case uh, but obviously make sure they're level side to side as well and everything's nice and square um, <clears throat> so yeah so once you've uh, once you've got the buffer beams on you can then glue the floor in place so that just essentially glues in here like that um, up against the up against the buffer beam, um, so it makes the fills in the fills in the floor uh, of the footwell, uh, and that's all nice and straightforward. Um, once that's all done, then you can um, you need to fit the the wheels. So um, you need to put, as I say, using all the parts from the PS models uh, chassis kit, you can fit the bearings, um, fit the wheels. Um, the, the axles and the wheels, the gear obviously has to go on this on this end um, to mesh with the motor. Um, you might need to open this hole out ever so slightly. It's meant to be a tight fit, so the motor really is tightly held. Uh, but again, because of that kind of white of the way the, the first few layers kind of expand a little as they as they're printed, this hole is deliberately kind of undersized. Um, so you need to just kind of scrape around the edge to open it up enough to get the, the motor to fit to fit nicely. Um, at this point, I usually fit the motor, check it meshes nicely with the gear, uh, but then remove it um, because it's just going to help with, with painting in a minute. So um, once you've got the wheels in uh, and obviously the axles of the right length, you can then fit the uh, the axle boxes. So these have a I'm gonna the camera to focus. Yeah, these have this little notch in the back. The notch fits on these pins. Um, so you basically just, um, again, you might need to file slightly, but the, the, the pin should, it should fit nicely on the pin. Um, and what you're looking for is to make sure that the, the leaves, the leaf springs are nice and kind of uh, horizontal. Um, you might need to file ever so slightly from the edges to fit, but as I say, that I've not filed either of those and that just fit perfectly in. Um, so obviously glue on the pin, probably glue on each end of the leaf spring just to make sure they're, they're held in place. Um, <clears throat> that obviously traps the the wheels and stuff in, in place then um, so then at that point I tend to paint uh, the chassis um, so I spray it black um, including the buffer beams and everything give it a nice nice undercoat 
Uh, and when that's done, uh, I then mask up and paint the, the front surface, the buffer beams, uh, red. Um, it's just obviously a lot easier to paint something this kind of shape um, rather than have to deal with masking off the body and stuff to paint it all later. So that's that's what I'd, I'd recommend doing there. Um, once the paint's dry, I refit the motor. Um, I also um, soldered wires to the tags on the motor because obviously once you build up the body, that would be difficult to get to. Um, so on mine, I wired a small a, a plug on a small length of cable so I could then plug it into the into the rest of the the controls and the battery and stuff. Um, once the buffer beams have been painted red, um, I paint the coupling blocks black and fit them to the to the to the, the buffer beams. Uh, that works using this jig. So the jig essentially slots over the front um, of the of the buffer beam like that. So it covers up the holes on the bottom. That leaves a slot in the face here, um, which the buff the the coupling block should fit into. As I say, you might need to um, you probably need to file the jig slightly just to open up the hole. Um, so that it's a nice fit. This one's a bit tight um, so that you can get the coupling block and glue it in place and then pull the jig away without pulling the, the coupling block away. Um, you'll notice also that the coupling block's not um, symmetrical um, top to bottom. So there's the bolts here. Um, you need to have it that way up so that the bolts are nearer the top of the buffer than the bottom uh, to, to match the, the real thing. Um, so that's that's that. <clears throat> so then you've got, as I say, you've then got the, the coupling blocks on the on the chassis, um, and then we can start work on the body. So the body um, to start with, these two parts um, printed separately just to make life easier, but they glue together. Oops, they glue together uh, like that. So make sure they're nice and uh, and square and level at the top here. Um, filing if, if necessary etc. Uh, that gives you a, a, a single then solid piece. Um, then you fit the metal cowl. As I say I haven't got one to hand but essentially it obviously fits nicely across the surface. You've seen it in the other the other videos. Um, it should stick you, you know glue all the way across these surfaces uh, and should be butt up against the side of this strip. This strip is to um, is for the doors um, to rest against. Uh, but it has the added advantage that the, the metal cowl should be butt up to that strip and also butt up here. You can see the strip here as well, so butt up to that. So that gives you a nice kind of uh, place to uh, kind of positively locate it against. Uh, and make sure, obviously, when you fit the cowl, it's as tight as possible against the, the 3D printed part. Uh, you'll also find that the this, when, once you've got fitted the cowl, you'll find that this end here probably protrudes a little bit past the cowl. That's deliberate. Um, so that you can then file it back flush with the cowl so that everything's in the right in the right place. Um, the cowl is also obviously um, I leave the metal too long so it will come quite a way down uh, past the bottom of either side. Um, so what you need to do then is very carefully trim that excess away once it's glued in place. Um, and what you need to obviously do is kind of trim not as much as you think and then see if it fits. Um, yeah, I haven't I haven't done anything with these parts yet so you'll find that the the pin holes are quite tight as well for the same reason as all the we've already talked about so you'll need to file the pins and open out the holes slightly just to make sure everything's a nice fit um i could print them so they're a loose fit but then everything's tolerances are a bit a bit off and i prefer it to be tight and you kind of open them out so that everything is nicely uh, nicely fits um but yeah so make sure that <clears throat> that this you know this part fits flush against the chassis um and then yeah this part fits flush against the chassis so you shouldn't be able to see a gap underneath here or anything. Uh, and then keep cutting the cowl carefully and carefully and filing it until it's flush. And this part will sit kind of upright square on the chassis with the metal um, nicely in line. Um, and then obviously you need to shape, finish shaping the cowl as well. Uh, there are two different uh, templates depending on uh, which version of the, the loco you want to build uh, that have different amounts of that cowl cut away. Um, and at this point you can also drill holes and fit the two the two vents um the bigger one is towards the front of the loco again positioning for those is on the is on the template um 
there are four millimeter pins on the bottom so you need a four millimeter drill um, I actually couldn't bother drilling that far through the metal sheet and into this block so I actually trimmed mine down quite a lot um, just to save me having to drill that much resin um, so yeah so once you've got the the kind of this bit with the cowl on <coughs> um, you can then um, start assembling the rest of the body so you need to um, fit the four magnets in these holes they may need out opening out slightly with a with a drill just to get the magnets in you need to make sure that the magnets are flush with the surface um, otherwise uh, you'll have problems getting the doors doors on in the right place um, once the magnets are in then obviously you can fit this piece fits in uh, in here like that and this front radiator piece fits in here um, and just need to make sure that that's all kind of uh, square and, and fits nicely uh, on the loco um, be careful with this part these pieces around the edge these this this lip is quite fragile um, it's not too bad now it's been sat off the printer for a while when they first come off the printer and the resin's still a little soft they're really quite really quite fragile um, I'll try and make sure these parts are specifically well wrapped when I when they're posted out um, obviously once you get it all glued together they're fine uh, but just try and make sure you don't catch these edges because they will just kind of chip off um, so yeah so then you can get those three pieces kind of um, square against each other um, and then glue um, glue all that onto the foot plate the chassis which obviously traps the motor in place then um, and then when when you've got all that fitted uh, the control panel um, the, the controls can go kind of in the middle of this of this piece like that against the the foot plate and the back here uh, and then you can go to town on the detailing with the pins uh, for control uh, there's usually one in here one in here um, one near the footwell um, photos are, are, are good for that looking at photos the real thing uh, and obviously you can fit the battery if you want um, that kind of thing uh, and then that leaves just um, the other bits that you kind of have to fabricate itself so obviously once this is glued in place on the well sorry what I should have said is before you glue it in place the chassis once it's all assembled these three parts um, you can paint it um, so um, again that makes it easy to paint it without it being uh, on the foot plate so there's less masking masking issues uh, and then when it's painted obviously fit it to the fit it to the foot plate and then fit the grill on the on the front as well so it's nice and flat again flush against the foot plate and against the uh, the maker's name um, so once the body is assembled onto the, the chassis you can prepare the doors um, so cut these to size uh, details are in the in the instructions um, use the template to drill the holes for the handles uh, and then fit these um, you can then fit these parts to the back uh, of the door again you'll need to fit the, the magnets um, into these recesses what you have to do obviously is make sure that you get the polarity of the magnets the right way around so that this actually kind of attaches and, and, and grabs onto here and isn't repelled away um, I tend to put the second magnet kind of on top and then push this on so that um, I know I'm getting it the right way around but however you want to do that should be should be fine uh, as long as you make sure that they're the right way around um, and obviously it may be that they're different um, on different sides of the loco so you might need to um, label the, the doors so you know which is the left and which is the right um, once you've got the doors assembled obviously you can put the handles on and things to make them easier to take on and off um, you may find that you need to file the bottom of the doors um, to get them to fit nicely again the sizing I've got is for kind of the exact size but there are you know slight issues and tolerances so what you'll find is um, obviously what you want is the door to fit um, so the door to fit nicely against the top of here and the chassis at the bottom um, on the angle and be nice and flush against this if it's ever slightly too long it will kind of have to tilt outwards to fit um, so you can just file the bottoms uh, and just kind of keep preparing them, filing them all until it's a it's a nice fit and then you can obviously paint the doors um, separately to the, to the rest of the model um, <clears throat> and then that just leaves uh, the seat so the seat really will depend on what kind of driver figure you're using um, the instructions include a template for um, the, the the seat I used uh, which is just basically a, a, a it's a three-part fold-up um, seat 
um, if you use that seat then essentially the edges of the seat should be level with the outside edge here and the edge of the buffer beam um, which puts the driver as kind of as far into this corner as possible um, which gives you some clearance between him and the, the cowl over the controls um, and then I use just a small piece of um, styrene rod I think um, to lift it up so he was in just the position I wanted height wise um, with his feet in the footwell and, and to clear the, the cowl and things as I say it really will depend on exactly which um, what figure you choose to use as to how you how you do that and you might want to use an entirely different um, seat um, even if that's not prototypical you may want to to do something that's better suited for your for your figure um, and I painted the seat separately and then glued it to the chassis after it was um, after the chassis was painted just because I've decided it was easier to get the height and the position right with the driver figure on it once the body was all fitted and painted so I knew exactly how it was all going to to fit together um, Obviously, if, you, if you're worried about it not being very strong, you could actually drill a hole possibly through the bottom of the seat uh, and through the foot, the foot plate uh, and put a proper rod a rod through rather than just a piece of plastic or something in between just to give a bit better, um, stronger, kind of stronger joint. Um, and then that's essentially it. Um, obviously, you'll then have to kind of cram all the electronics in around the motor, um, as you saw in my in my original one. There's, plenty, there's, there's enough space for the... A lipo battery and a local remote and a full uh, glass fuse so there's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of space um, so yeah so as I said there will be instructions um, as I say they're more kind of notes along the lines of what we've just we've just talked about but hopefully it should be um, should be fairly easy for anybody who's built any kits before to put this to put this together uh, as I said the, the hardest part is fitting the, the metal cowl and making sure it's exactly the right size as you um, uh, to, to fit nicely against the, the loco but it's just a question of kind of taking that easy um, not rushing and just kind of taking some very small amounts off uh, with a file until you get it, until you get it just right um, so yeah so I've, I've got first batch I think everybody who's asked for a set of parts I've now printed them um, so I just need to make up the, the metal sections um, and then hopefully I'll get those out in the post soon um, Obviously, if you're coming to this project new um, and you haven't seen the other videos, go have a look. If you want the set of scratch aid parts we've just talked about, um, I will leave the, the contact form uh, URL in the in the video description uh, and drop me a line and we'll, we'll, we'll sort something out for you. Hopefully that's interesting and I look forward to seeing uh, photos, videos of uh, of people's completed locos once they, once they start receiving their kits.